Hi, it's Leslie Zemeckis, back with another Right for Success. First, a quick reminder, Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is Entity's first book club, where I'll be speaking with Christina Hammond Reads about the Black Kids. It's free. RSVP link is in my bio. This guest author and I have a shared love of tigers. As you know, I wrote and directed a documentary on the world's first female tiger trainer, Mabel Stark. It's called Mabel, Mabel Tiger Trainer, and that's my shameless plug. Today at 10.30 Pacific Standard Time this morning, a couple hours, Mary and I are going to chat, chat books and tigers live on my Instagram, so pop back here. Um, I read Mary's book on my Kindle, and I loved it. So let me tell you about Mary Morris's terrific memoir, All the Way to the Tigers. Mary Morris turns a personal catastrophe into a rich, multi-layered memoir full of personal growth, family history, and thrilling travel. Morris goes to India by herself in search of tigers. Her first lesson is don't look for a tiger because you won't find it. Morris connects deeply with these magnificent and highly endangered animals and her weeks on tiger safari also afford a new understanding of herself. I can tell you from being up close with tigers while I was shooting my film, they are mesmerizing. They are wildly dangerous and they are smart cats. O Magazine says that this lush story tells the tale of a single woman on the road looking for redemption and healing. Expect the unexpected in her rich philosophies inner discoveries and self-realizations on the road. Morris is called a master memoirist and All the Way to the Tigers is among her finest works. Brave, layered, complex, and deeply human, says Danny Shapiro, New York Times best-selling author. So here is Mary in her garden with her three writing tips and how they relate to her garden. And remember, join us back here in a couple hours at 1030 live on my Instagram. See you next week with another powerful, masterful storyteller because stories matter. Hi, I'm Erin Morris and I'm sitting in my garden. Now, um, it's winter so there's really not very much to see, but I'm gonna share with you my three tips on being a writer and they pretty much have to do with my garden. So a number of years ago when we bought this house I was working on an 800 page novel that just didn't seem to be working out and at the same time I started to learn how to be a gardener. I didn't know anything about gardening, I didn't know shade from sun, but I started fiddling around in the soil out here and after a while I realized that if I bought plants and they weren't doing well I could move them around. I could take them out. If I had a vine that had gotten too wild and crazy, I could cut it back. And I began to think about what the garden was teaching me, and I slowly began to take the lessons of the garden and apply them to that 800-page novel. The first one, you can move anything around. Anything that didn't seem to be working out where it was, I put it in another file, I held onto it, and then I would find another place for it. You could take anything out. Anything that wasn't working, I decided I could just take it out. Um, I would just take it out. That was it. <laughs> and finally, cutting back. I think that was one of the biggest lessons that I learned from this garden. That don't underestimate the importance of a good trim. And cutting back enables a tree, a plant, a vine to flourish. Now I'm just going to talk for a minute about how I applied these three principles to my latest book, the memoir, All the Way to the Tigers. When I first wrote this book, it was 420 pages long. And I began applying what the garden taught me to this book, that I could move anything around. I had 112 pieces, and I spent a lot of time moving them around. I could take anything out. The book was way too long. It weighs in here at about 220 pages, 200 pages shorter than it was. Take anything out and cut it back. And in the process, it went from being an unwieldy 420 page book to I think a more manageable 220 page book. 
so that's what the garden taught me. As I say, it's winter, the garden is fallow, there's not that much to see, but if you come back in the springtime, it will be in bloom. Thank you very much.